people have come to engage in our governing process. Please bless all those that have come here. May we all listen to each other with an open mind, with the view of taking care of the people as you would wish that we would do it. Amen. <coughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> first thing would be the adoption of the agenda. Can I get a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Uh, before we do the public hearing, I had one thing I wanted to uh, bring up. Uh, for those of you that didn't know, uh, we are in the Gordon Building. And uh, Lindsey Gordon's wife uh, was buried yesterday. She had died on uh, Friday. So for those that didn't know, um, that is what it is. <coughs> that was, that uh, was my second cousin. All right, on to the public hearings. The first one being the proposed ordinance establishing the tax rate for the calendar year. Mr. Chairman, what? I have three speakers signed up to speak in, um, for this public hearing. The first being Carol Hunter. 237 Blue Ridge Road. Okay, well, I shall open the public hearing then. I didn't realize I was going to be first. <laughs> <coughs> April Fool's. I guess. <laughs> I grew up in Orange County. Mm, let me be clear about that. I wasn't born and raised here. My husband and I came here as newlyweds 42 years ago. We were both used to the city life. My city was Chicago. His was Charleston, West Virginia. We were both charmed by the quaint town and the beautiful setting, and we still think that those aspects of this community are really appealing. However, it was the people that kept us here. People like you taught us how to be grown-ups, showed us how to contribute in meaningful ways through the, example of, through the example of civic leaders, the church community, business professionals, and educators. We saw the power of an honest day's work we learned that giving is a true blessing. We saw firsthand how collaboration and consensus building benefit everyone and helps the community grow. And that going the extra mile, coming to meetings like this, make a huge different difference for the, ov the overall effort. But when it's all said and done, going that extra mile really makes a difference for both the individual and the community. We learned that doing the right thing takes courage. It isn't always the easy way that, it, it isn't always the easy way, and it involves a complicated and multifaceted decision tree. The decisions you make as the Board of Supervisors embody the characteristics that made Orange such a wonderful place for us to live and learn. I applaud the work you do, and I thank you for taking leadership in the area of the county budget. I support the proposed tax increase. To be honest, I don't really want to pay more taxes. I'm an educator. My husband's a partner in a small business. We know what it's like to work with a limited budget. However, we know from examples like le of, of leaders like you that building a strong infrastructure is the key to the survival of a community. I believe that the budget will allow for the honest, hardworking people of Orange to do their jobs now and into the future. As an educator, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how important the budget increase is to the children of our community. But this tax increase, this budget, is about so much more. And in the end, it's that so much more that has the biggest impact. Collaborating and building consensus looking out for each other. That's what makes Orange beautiful. Thanks for all that you do to nurture and grow this beautiful place. Thank you. <coughs> Next speaker is Doris Zuba. One seven one zero eight Douglas Road. I know before I speak that you've already made up your mind as to what you're going to do, but to support my right as a citizen and to re represent many of my 
neighbors and fellow Orange County residents, especially those who are retired and on limited incomes that feel rather hopeless and helpless, I'm going to share my thoughts about this proposed tax increase. <clears throat> in 1971, my husband and I purchased our property. We built a house in 1983 and moved in, knowing that someday we could sell two, three acres if needed to pay for medical care or expenses in our old age. With the changes that you have made in the property law since then, I now can do nothing with my property except sell the whole package. I do not have enough property to put in land or conservation easement for a tax reduction. And about three years ago, when I approached the county with the possibility of having my daughter build a house on my property so my family would be close to me as I aged and needed assistance, I was informed that she could indeed build a home, but that I would have to tear down mine. <clears throat> I, I like living in rural Virginia. I've always enjoyed being here, but currently I can't imagine anyone wanting to buy, and I, I don't plan to sell my property at the moment, so I just want that clear. But I can't imagine anyone wanting to buy the whole package with the high real estate tax being proposed in Orange County. Already with a high property tax rate, the highest meal tax in the state, and lack of services, especially in District 1. Neighboring counties have a much lower tax rate. Green, for instance, 69 cents per hundred based on 2013. Louisa, 65, Madison, 67. And even Albemarle, with a lot more to offer its citizen, is proposing the same tax rate as Orange. Also, <clears throat> according to last week's Orange Review, the 8.4 cent increase will raise individual taxes from $81 to $344. However, my increase will be $359.54. I can't believe that with only 15 acres and a 30-year-old medium-sized house, I will be paying more than the published maximum increase. Also, your proposed increase of 11% seems excessive. When the last reassessment was done, on my, my property value decreased by almost 100000 but my taxes increased by almost $500. The government cost of living increases in the two years since your last reassessment were 1.7 in 2013 and 1.5 in 2014. And then in 2010 and 2011, there was a zero COLA. For an elderly person on a limited income, an 11% tax increase is most excessive. We all have wishes, hopes, and dreams, but the average person has a budget based on their known income and expenses and if the funds aren't available, then we can't have them. Only governments seem to make a dream budget for which their citizens pay. I, along with many taxpayers, especially in District 1, am still trying to determine what services we get for our tax dollars. I accept that schools are a large part of the county budget, but it appears that the primary interest is in the Locust Grove area. Gordon Barber Elementary has long been known as the neglected stepchild for the county. Classrooms are still being housed in trailers. As a retired teacher, I certainly support the schools and increasing teacher salaries, but I also recognize many areas of waste within a school division which need to be monitored more closely. And yes, I have green boxes provided which I can haul my trash to. There's also a hidden fee for that on our utility bills. In order to get broadband or Wi-Fi service, I have to pay a monthly fee for a hotspot so that I can get on the internet because of where I'm located in Orange County. Um, and I know we can also expect another tax increase in the next two years before the new assessment because taxes cannot be increased in the year of the reassessment according to state law. Now, I do accept the need for a tax increase as everything costs more, but I think an increase more in line with the cost of living is reasonable, not 11%. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I want to speak on the tax um, increase because as a parent, um, as a person involved in the schools, uh, I would really like to see better funding for them. Um, I did a little research today um, before I spoke to you, and I found uh, that this gentleman in Delaware uh, did a study on public school funding and performance. And his hypothesis tested out amongst all the states. He looked at testing data. Uh, per pupil expenditures, how much money uh, was state versus local, 
And what he found was that better funding obviously improved school performance, but that local funding made a difference. Not relying on the state, local funding actually increased school performance as well because people were more invested in the schools, they felt ownership, they felt that they were more involved in those decisions. Um, he also found that uh, the property taxes actually uh, did not um, hurt property values, that it actually, because that investment was made in the community, that property values increased because people were looking for places that spent money on their schools, that had good school services, that had good community services. So those increases in taxes actually helped the community as a whole. Um, he also found um, that all of these things together created this ownership in the schools um, that we in Locust Grove and hopefully all of Orange County feel. Um, Locust Grove families are very much involved in their schools and we've been watching the whole process of the separation of the elementary school and the middle school very carefully. We've been watching um, the primary school uh, very carefully and we've been paying attention to how our schools are funded and how our teachers are paid and where that money goes. And the school budget that's out right now, I think, is a very good one. It has all of the things that we're interested in in it, uh, both for elementary education all the way up to high school. They've put in there um, things like STEM classes, uh, which are extremely important at this point in order to get students into colleges or vocational schools. It has the arts. It has everything that we really want. Um, but there's no way to do that without an increase in funding. And so I hope that you'll really consider that tax increase and what it could do for not only the children, but the community as a whole overall. Thank you. Thank you. Last speaker is T. Lohr, 24073 Monroe View Road. How y'all doing? First of all, I'd like to say my taxes have increased 300% in the last 10 years. And I understand y'all need revenue to run things, you know. Um, my question is, why don't we have an alcohol or cigarette tax in the county? I'm sure that brings us a whole lot of revenue. And as far as the schools go, my opinion on that is as long as children can carry cell phones to school, and I know of some personally that can do two to 300 taxes in a school day, if that can happen, I don't think the teachers are doing their job. If you run the speed limit in the county, you'll get run over driving these roads. There's tickets, there's revenue, following too close. If you want to be in the business of owning a bunch of homes to rent them out, then that's a business. You ought to put an extra tax on that. If you can afford to buy a bunch of homes and rent them out, then you ought to be able to afford to pay a little extra. You know, there's, there's lots of ways to bring, to get revenue besides getting it off the backs of the landowners. I understand there's 30, 30, roughly 30% 30 of tax uh, of the land in Orange County is in the conservation easement deal or whatever, where people don't have to pay their regular rates and tax. Well, I'm on disability myself, and I, and I, I, qual I qualify for a tax break myself, but I don't take it because I pay my fair share. And for those in the, that have all their land in easements that say that they're doing it for the land, to save the land, that's all cool and great. Step up to the plate then and pay the regular rate. So that body, everybody that's struggling in, in, in the county, you don't have to t pay for everybody's kids. I don't have any children in schools, but I don't mind putting, putting a few dollars towards it. But I'd like to see what us get better use out of what we have. You know, the dog, dog licenses, kennel licenses. I know the rates on those haven't raised at all in the last 10 years. And I would, I would be willing to bet probably 20. There's a whole lot of dogs in the county. There's a whole lot of kennels in the county. A man can get a 10 dog kennel license for $25 in the county. Now, I ain't never knew anybody that sells dogs not to get several hundred dollars or more for their dogs. Now, that's the going rate for animals. The rates for the kennel licenses should be higher. I mean, that's revenue. Let's think about some things that, that are really low that we could get some more revenue out of instead of off the tax, off the backs of everybody that owns a piece of property. And I just wish y'all would consider that, think about it. Just the alcohol and cigarette tax. I mean, I smoke cigarettes. 
I don't drink beer no more, but, you know, everybody that does can afford a few more cents. And there's a whole lot of people that do, and that's a lot of money. Thank you. Y'all Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, Connie has her hand up. Last speaker is Terry Pace, president of the Union Guild. Hello, Terry. Hello, Terry Pace, Union Bill. Um, I'm very shocked at um, such uh, proposed waste, special interest, recklessness of hard-earned taxpayer dollars. Um, I think it's interesting that in the paper you say proposed tax rate fiscal year July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015, and you have it the, your very last sentence. Um, under that title says the following tax rates are proposed in support of the proposed fiscal year 2015 budget. So the problem that I've always had, well, one of the problems besides the waste, is um, the collection. So our first collection for a fiscal year that begins, our calendar year, begins July 1st. The first collection for that year is December 5th. So um, what you're collecting now is for the current budget. It is for your expenditures for January, February, March, April, May, and June of this current year. You've already passed a budget, and it didn't include an eight cent tax rate. So this money that you're gonna collect on June 5th with whatever rate increase that you you um, adhere um, is going to be a windfall for the county. It's not accounted for in your budget. It's not accounted for in this current year budget, and it's not accounted for in your 2015 year budget. So um, it, it's, it is um, a betrayal of the public trust to continue this practice of when the first collection for fiscal year 2014, July 2014 to June 30th, 2015 is December 5th, not June 5th. June 5th's collection is, as I stated, for the months from this past January to the present June. So that increase gives you a windfall of at least $4 million unaccounted for. That, that kind of activity has got to stop. And um, furthermore, <laughs> you've got to stop with this um, separation of a government elite group where, you know, we take care of our own off of the backs of the taxpayer that's struggling to make it happen. Um, the, the accountability I I is not there. And um, you have to be more accountable. You have to be more careful. And um, it's not about promoting your special interests, your ego, or um, your friends. It's about um, serving the citizens of Orange County. And this kind of collection, and I, I, don't, I don't know how, I know it's um, legal to um, go to the calendar year for the taxes, but I don't know with this advertisement saying the following tax rates are proposed in support of um, the proposed fiscal year 2015 when you're collecting them six months early. And also what this means is every six months, if you raise it even a penny, you are c raising taxes every six months, not every year. And uh, <laughs> th that's, a, that's a problem, and it should be discontinued. Thank you. Thank you. Close the public hearing. Okay. Wish to do anything, or are we just taking input tonight? Taking input. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go then to the proposed operating budget. Open public hearing for that. Thank you very much and good evening. My name is Grant Christie. I'm the president of the Rapid End Volunteer Fire Department and I'm joined here tonight by Mike Smith, our chief, and, and Gary Jones, our longtime secretary, longtime member of the fire department. And uh, we just came out here tonight to thank you for the support that, that you give our department. Um, I've been uh, president now for the last two years and um, seen some really great um, stuff going on at the department. We've really increased our membership a lot. We've really increased our presence in, in, this, side of the, in this side of the county. Um, and um, everything's going really good down there and, and we're really looking forward to continued success with the department. And once again, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. evening. Thank you for this opportunity to address the board. Um, as I begin, I'd like to express how thankful I am to see such a fluid and working relationship with the Board of Supervisors and the school board this year. I'm thrilled to uh, hear the constructive dialogue and the meaningful working relationship between these two boards. Um, there has never been a time that I can think of of my nine years in our, with Orange County Public Schools that the climate and the mission of our school system has remained as positive and as uplifting despite political and economic environment that we're in. This, remarkable, uh, this is remarkable and demonstrates the resilience and grit of our school employees. Morale remains high and more teachers, students, and parents are demonstrating confidence in a school system that strives to meet our basic 21st century needs. The proposed school board budget reflects these needs in order to provide our students with the opportunity to compete with our local and global workforce demands. In my professional opinion, this grit and fortitude amidst difficult times and the successes that we celebrate reflects the true heart and soul of what our organization is about. But there is no certainty of how long we can sustain these outcomes without meaningful effort to once again begin to invest in the long-term critical needs of our school system and meet the challenges we currently face and the challenges that are sure to come. As a school employee, I'm sure it comes as no surprise that after reviewing the school board budget, I don't see anything that would be considered fluff or non-essential. Although I realize the proposed school board budget is not likely to be fully funded, I am impressed and I am encouraged by the level at which the board and community has shown a willingness to fund our schools. The proposed tax levy and the proposed level of funding of schools by the county administrator reflects a sincere and meaningful effort to begin to invest in our school system once again. And as was printed in the Orange County Review not too long ago, a way to begin to spend smarter, not simply spending less, and might I add, spending smarter, not simply spending more. As I said, the county administrator's budget is a true and obvious investment in the continued strengthening of our schools and community. It deserves to be noted once again that the school board's proposed budget serves as a reflection of our school system's needs from <coughs> multiple stakeholders. The school board's proposed budget is a reflection <coughs> of students, teachers, parents, school officials, and community stakeholders' basic needs. These groups have addressed these needs to the school board, and we trust that the school board will share these needs with you. Many of these same stakeholders are addressing the board or have addressed the board over the last few weeks to bring awareness to the validity of these critical needs. Please know that your consideration is greatly appreciated and valued by others and myself in the community. A vote that reflects anything less than the county administrator's proposed budget would be an awful shame. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next speaker is Gary Jones, 230 Woodbrook Lane. It's downtown track. <laughs> but uh, to make one small correction to Grant Chrissy's presentation, I'm working on my 24th year as treasurer. 
back then and and probably die in the position way it looks like. <laughs> and I just appreciate the support that we got from the board for this coming budget. And I did go with Mike Smith on a fire call on Lahore Road last Wednesday night down below Mount Pleasant Baptist Church and and the teamwork I saw between us and Orange and Mine Run and Gornsville exemplify what I expect the Culpeper County and Orange County to see in the in the future. So thank you again for your support. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, my name is Chris Miller and I'm Executive Director of Aging Together. Um, and I wanna thank you for the opportunity to um, speak to you this evening. And I wanna thank you for your ongoing support of our um, nonprofit organization. This year, Aging Together has renewed our commitment to supporting the aging services providers, local government, businesses, and the faith community to work together on behalf of older adults and their families here in Orange. We're very excited to have begun uh, working on some collaborations uh, with the chamber through your new uh, president, Amanda Settle, and also with the relatively new triad director on some initi initiatives too that we're hoping to share with you later this year. Our membership in the Orange Aging Together team has grown substantially and we will be bringing more educational programs, health and wellness initiative, and new resources to Orange. But I'm here today in addition to saying thank you to also remind you that Aging Together is here to support you as well please feel free to call on us for information, for technical support, or for whatever you may need to assure that Orange continues to support its seniors now and into the future. As a sampling of what Aging Together provides, I brought you a flyer with information about two of our initiatives, one of them on the serious side, uh, a, live well, a set of live well workshops for people living with chronic illness, mm -hmm. and a more whimsical one, an invitation to our senior senior prom that's later this month. Maybe we'll see you at one of those. And thank you again for supporting Aging Together and as a result, the older citizens of Orange County. Public hearing the proposed capital improvement plan. Open public hearing for that. We don't currently have any speakers signed up. Close the public hearing for that. Any comments? I would uh, suggest that uh, we don't need the workshop uh, next uh, prom Thursday. Okay. We have an agreement on that. Motion? I'm gonna make that a motion. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. The meeting is canceled. Uh, with that then, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.